in your life. Something special, something important. It could be your household. It could be your job or career. It could be your family. It could be a loved one. It could be you. This was Job. Job, on a single day, heard news that his family was dead, that his livestock were taken away, and that everything that was precious to him was gone. This was Job. Job was broken. But it was as he was broken that he came to discover something beautiful. Something beautiful and something wonderful. I guess we can say that as Jesus, or as Job came to this moment, he did something beautiful, something marvelous and miraculous. It says that he tore his clothes and he worshiped and praised God, saying that naked I came into the world, and naked I shall depart. The Lord gives, and the Lord takes away. The Lord gives, and the Lord takes away. It was while Job was broken, it was while he was grieving then, that he discovered something beautiful and marvelous about God. That even in times of loss, even in times when we are broken, God is still God. God is still a God who loves us, even when things are taken. I guess you could say that Job had found himself in a place of acceptance. Acceptance. And I, I like the way they do this in sign language, and I want you all to do this with me. Reach your hands out like this, and, and, and go like this. That is the sign for acceptance. This is a stage, the last stage in grieving that the renowned psychologist Kubler-Ross identified. You know, you have moved then past denial. You've moved past the anger. You've moved past the, the bargaining and depression. And then you have arrived at a moment when you are really saying, it's okay. It isn't necessarily a happy time. In fact, there may not really be any emotions at all. Simply, you are broken, and you're conceding to the fact that I'm broken, and things are lost, and yet it is okay. God is still God. Job seems to go right to acceptance after his loss. He goes right in, tears his robes, and he begins to worship and praise God and acknowledges who God is. Job goes right to acceptance, but I guess probably for the rest of us, it may take a little longer to get to acceptance, doesn't it? I mean, this is certainly what happened to me. It took me a while to get to acceptance in my own experience with loss. It was May 26, 2010. I received a knock at the door of my house. And when I opened it, standing at the door was Officer Jeff Messer of the Delray Beach Police Department. He was a messer bringing to me troubling news. He was there to tell me that my mom had been arrested, charged with uh, several other crimes, fraud included, um, crimes that she vehemently, even to this day, denies. But on that day, in just one day, upon hearing that news, my family and I were broken like that glass. And just in one evening, then, we went through various stages of grieving, perhaps all of them, except for one, except for acceptance. You see, in our mind, you know, uh, bad things shouldn't happen to good people. To me, as far as I knew, my mom was a good and respectable person. So why should bad things happen to her? That is called, by social psychologists, the just world theory. Just world theory. And it is a popular and common notion that good things happen to good people and bad things happen to bad people. Well, I always thought of my mom as being very good, 
Job was regarded as good, righteous in all the world. And yet, strangely, bad things were happening. When you are a just world theorist, then, it is hard to accept loss. It is, we have a God who not only gives, but a God who takes away. When we are in grief, when we are broken, and we have a just world theory in mind, it is hard to see the love of God for all the pieces of shattered glass. It was hard for us to see in that time at my mom's incarceration um, any good. All we knew was that God had taken away. All we wanted from God was to perform some miracle, some wonderful thing to, to give us our life back, to give us our mom back, to give her her freedom. But it didn't happen. At times like that, I guess we wonder in our brokenness, is God really God? Does he love us? Does God still love us even when he's taking things away? Well, the answer is yes. Yes, he does. There's a passage I want to share with you from Hebrews chapter 12. And I invite you in your Bibles at home or certainly make a note for yourself on your, on your folder there. But I want you to mark this verse well. This is from Hebrews chapter 12, and it starts at verse 7. It is about being broken, but it is also about being loved. And it says, Hebrews 12, verse 7, Endure hardship as discipline. God is treating you as sons. For what son is not disciplined by his father? If you are not disciplined, and everyone undergoes discipline, then you are illegitimate children and not true sons. Moreover, we have all had human fathers who disciplined us, and we respected them for it. How much more should we submit to the father of our spirits and live? Our fathers disciplined us for a little while as they thought best, but God disciplines us for our good, that we may share in his holiness. Now, no discipline seems pleasant at the time, but painful. Later on, however, it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained by it. God disciplines those he loves. Even when things are taken, God is still God. God still loves us. God is our Father. And let me ask you all parents, a show of hands, as loving parents, how many of you have taken things away from your children when you thought it might harm them? Let me see some hands here. Yeah, if all of you as loving parents will take things from your children so that they are not harmed, how much more would a righteous God in heaven, a father of all mercy, take from us things that could harm us, and even worse, kill us? Understand that all the things that we have in this world, all of our treasures are perishable. They are mortal. They are things that may actually distract us from all that God is giving us in heaven, eternal life itself. As those things are taken away, we come to see then all the more that God has given us. God gave us his son. He gave us his son, a human being, a righteous one to stand among us in flesh and blood. But God also took away his son. Jesus was taken away when he was arrested. Jesus was taken away when his body was removed from the cross. And then three days later, Jesus was taken away at his resurrection. And then 40 days after that, Jesus was taken away when he ascended into heaven. Jesus, the single mortal man, is taken away. But God has given us so much more by his Spirit. We have then, by the Spirit then, Christ multifold, multiplied among us. We have Jesus Christ's Word, 
scattered and spread all throughout the world. We have Jesus Christ's body broken for us and shared among the multitudes. We have Jesus Christ and the pieces of himself scattered among us right here today in the people of God. Jesus, the one man, is taken away, but by the Spirit, we have Jesus multifold. All I could see back on May 26 of 2010 that God had taken. But it was going to be later then that God would certainly reveal to me how much more we have gained by his Spirit. You understand that it was at that time in the worst times of our life, when we, my family and I, were broken, God appeared in our life. He appeared in the word of God that was spoken and shared with us. He appeared in every single one of you who came up to us and prayed for us and provided support. Some of you, out of your own means, providing money towards bond. But most of the time, you were all were just there for us, caring for us and loving on us as Christ would if he were here in person. In fact, he was here in person in every single one of you. The week that this happened, the week that my mom was taken into jail, the following Sunday then was going to be my first Sunday leading worship service as the liturgist. Now you can imagine the anxiety and the anticipation I had of standing before all of you on that particular day. But what became very apparent to me as I was standing there, as it is today, was just how full the church was how while something was taken from me, I could then see how much God had given all of us through you. God has given, but he takes away. And as he takes away, we come to discover how much more we have received by his Spirit. In the Spirit then, by the Holy Spirit then, all of you then who are here today are like Job. You have come here to worship, to praise God. You have come here to hear his word and to receive a God who is broken and given to you in the shattered pieces of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You have come here to be among the various pieces of the body of Christ now assembled for worship. Therefore, I invite all of you, whenever you feel like that piece of glass back there, when you feel yourself broken, to come here to worship, to come to acceptance, to come here and receive God's words and promises, to come and receive his body and blood, to come and receive the love and the fellowship of the body of Christ and the people of God. All of you are welcome then to come to acceptance, no matter where you are in your stage of grieving. Come here to find your place in acceptance. My mom was taken away. May 26, 2010, she was taken away, and to this day she remains at the Lowell State Correctional Facility. At the time I first heard about this, I could not accept it. But then it was come to reveal to me people like Job, who was good, people like Jesus Christ, the Son of God, Although they were broken, although things were taken from them, God had blessed them and blessed all of us by what we have gained by the Spirit. So although for many days I found myself in all those stages of grief, finally in coming here, I came to acceptance. I came to acceptance as all of you have come to acceptance by being here today. We've all accepted that Jesus Christ has been taken from us. But now we discover and see how much more God has given us by his Spirit. And to him we give praise. Amen. What I'd like to now do is invite Debbie Hawkins to come forward and share a testimony, a personal testimony about how God has revealed to her what she has gained in her losses. Good morning. My name is Debbie Hawkins, and I'm an assistant teacher here in the Tiger Talk program. We've heard over the past few weeks, and as Pastor Tony just talked about grief, 
and grief affects us in so many different ways. Probably the most familiar one to all of us is death. But it also affects us as far as unemployment, ill health, and the end of relationships. Well, during this past year, I've had many of these things happen to me in, in a very short period of time. And on top of all of it, I had just moved here to Florida. I've traveled through all the different phases of grief and have finally come out on the side of acceptance. I praise God for that because without him, I would not be standing right here today. We all have unfair things happen to us. We can choose to cling to that hurt and to let it poison us and poison our future, or we can release it and trust God to make it up to us. Just like Job, I've always felt I was a good person. I love God. I have a great life. A life lived worshiping God, doing God's work. I believe the words of the Apostles' Creed and have always tried to live my life accordingly. Before moving to Florida, I was the youth director at my church, something that I truly, truly loved. The youth are my heart and my passion. I studied youth leadership at Columbia Theological Seminary in Atlanta. I'm married and I have four children and one grandson. I have always known without a doubt exactly where God wanted me to be. Well, my husband and I had the opportunity to move here to Florida, and we did, and it was great, and I loved it. And then all of a sudden, my life got turned upside down. I was working for um, a family member's family, and the short, I'm just going to give you the short story. Um, there was a death, and the whole family crumbled, and I ended up unemployed. And people that I cared deeply about were hurt very badly. And I couldn't wrap my brain around how God would allow all this to happen. How can you do this to my family? Um, how could you do it to me? I liked what I did. I thought, this is, what I, this is where I need to be. This is what I was supposed to be doing. And my heart became very, very heavy, and I lost all the joy in my life. Well, one day, my niece Elizabeth comes to me and says, Aunt Tebby, there's an opening at Trinity, and I think it's something you should look at. You would be perfect for it. So I thought about it, and I thought, mm, that's not me. I can't do that. Well, my brother-in-law heard about this, and he came and said, my, 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 that's one of his little sayings. He says, that's just perfect for you. I think you should go and try that. And I went, okay, maybe I should. So I did. I came here to Trinity, and I met with Miss Martin, and I loved her. And I thought, I can do this. Okay. How hard could this be? It should be fun. So I started working in the two-year-old program, and it did nothing for me. I'm like, this is not me. I, I didn't feel any joy in it. I was so bitter and hurt, and my heart was so heavy that I could not see the joy that was right in front of me. But I'm a hardhead, and I had promised myself and God that I would wait till the end of the year before I made any kind of a decision the school year. And so I kept showing up, showing up. Well, God had a plan for me, and one of my favorite Bible verses is Jeremiah 29, 11, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you, not to bring you harm, plans to give you hope and a future. And I thought, okay, so God, plan A that I thought was great didn't work out, so now you've moved me on here to plan B. And I slowly started to see things change once I kept remembering that God does have many plans for us. And then I got to spend time with Pastor Tony, and I started to see small glimmers of my joy come back to me, and he invited me to come and join with the youth group, and it was great. And then Sally Bothers became a God-bearer to me. She probably doesn't even realize the impact she had on me. It wasn't so much what she said, but just her being the wonderful Christian role model that she is. She became a support that I desperately needed. And then Miss Sandra and the children had a huge impact on me. When the kids would run up to me in the morning and give me a hug, and, and they would say, I love you, my heart started to melt. And it wasn't quite as heavy as it was. I was finally getting my joy back. And I started doing things that I always love. I'm a devotion junkie. I love doing devotions. I love reading my Bible. And I love attending worship. I believe that being here, being focused on God, listening to God, being with people that believe what I do has helped me to come through to acceptance. I can't change what happened or why it happened, but I can change me as long as I trust and obey in the Lord. 
and I'm still a hymn kind of a girl. Sorry, Jake, but I love hymns. And one of my favorite hymns is Trust and Obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. I truly do love working with the children. Yes, a part of me will always miss the youth and the older kids, but God has put me here, and I believe that in my heart. I believe it so much that I'm actually in the middle of taking some classes to get certified that I might be able to work here full time when and if the need arises. I thank each of you for your Christian faith and for sharing the love of the Lord with me, which has helped me to turn something broken into something beautiful. God bless. In wrapping up, then, there's a, there's a connecting point I would want to have you all take with you. You'll find it inside your, your folder there, uh, but it's something you can discuss during a week, and it is simply this. Um, see Job uh, 210, which is um, printed for you there sometime this week, and then discuss among yourselves what trouble um, is it that you have difficulty accepting and why. Uh, spend some time doing that. But you know, um, you know, Debbie, you're not the only one who's a hymn kind of person. I know Jim, uh, uh, Jake likes hymns also. In fact, I think we all like hymns. Amen? All right. And there's one particular hymn that I want us to maybe stand up and sing together. It is what we call the common doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. And um, we're going to get a little, little help here from, from Jake to get us started. pray with me. Lord God, you give and you take away. Help us see in times of loss all that we have received by your Spirit. Lord God, you gave us your Son, so when ours are taken, we know you are God. Bless our Memorial Day observances tomorrow as we remember the sacrifices that brought us and so many others in the world freedom. And merciful Lord, with your love, you have taken away our infirmities. By your word and spirit, give comfort to those among us who suffer in any way. Give all those for whom we pray hope and take away their suffering. Lord God, be with all those in our school who are traveling this week to destinations and bring them home safely to their families. Lord God, all this we pray in the name of Jesus. And also, we pray the prayer you've taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory ever and ever. Amen.